said, don't you can't <laughs> you can't be petty because it's time for end time what maturity, maturity. Yeah. amen Yes, sir. The Bible tells us, 1 Corinthians 13 and 11, when I was a child, I spake as a child. Oh, wait, I got a testimony, though. Y'all gonna give me a little time? I don't like throwing my pastor weight around, but... Y'all give me a minute. <laughs> so this whole 4D, 3D thing that I preached, it's the most powerful thing I've ever preached, most powerful concept I've ever preached. I'm telling you, y'all, it's just, when you get the video, you'll see. It's a lot, you heard a lot that passed you, and you, you, I'm, when you get it, you're gonna, it's, you, can, you're gonna, you can be on empty, and you're going to be full when you finish this video. I promise you. But... I had that happen to me, so I have an iPhone, and I have the little magnetic wallet, which is a great invention. And you can stick it on there, and it just stays on there, and you got your I, like two cards and my driver's license on, in it. And so, but I, I bought the bootleg one because Apple charged too much <laughs> for theirs. I got the bootleg one, but it works just this magnet works the same, whatever. And so I had a hoodie on one day and I was driving and it was hot. I had to go over here to uh, by Northeast Mall and drop some packages off at the UPS and go to this uh, Hallmark store. And so did a few things, went a couple of places and then I went home. As Soon as I got home, I'm getting out of the car, I get my phone and I automatically connect the little magnet to my phone. I'm like, where is my wallet? So I towed a car up. You know how you turn a car up? Just, I towed a car. I was like the assembly line that built it. <laughs> Screwdriver, drill, everything. Ratchet set. I'm going to tear this car apart. You know, it couldn't fall into the car. But I'm just looking because, you know, that's your wallet. You know? You know, I had this one comedian say, he was like, you want to know how that feels like when a kid... You know, walking with a, with a balloon, and the balloon goes away, and they start crying, ah, ah, and we just tell them, oh, we'll get you another, we'll get you another one. Well, what if your wallet just starts flying away? Ah, we'll get you another one. No, that's my wallet. <laughs> that's, that's the importance of it. So I lost it. I was just like, man, where is this thing? I'm just looking, tow the car up. Then I got on the internet, defeated, and started looking, what does it cost to get a new license? Turned off my cards online, so I'm just typing or whatever, and then it was time to go to the gym, so I jumped in the car, I was headed to the gym. No, I think Landon walked in, I told him about it, and you know, he just, oh, man, that's terrible. And so, <laughs> I was like, man, I don't know where it is, I just, it's, and it's so small. So I'm driving. To the to to um, Kelly, uh, KRB uh, the gym, and I'm in the truck, and I'm like, man, I cannot believe I lost my wallet. Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, "What did you just preach about?" I said, yeah. huh? This was like the day after Def Destination Entropy. I said, "What did you?" I said, "Oh, I preached about the Destination Entropy, whatever." He said, "Ask me what a wallet is." I'm not kidding. I, this, this was, and I prayed, I said, God, I need a 4D intersection into this 3D realm, and I need to, you to show me where my wallet is. As soon as I said that, in my mind, I saw my little wallet laying in the street. Yeah. I saw it laying in the street. And I said, okay, it's in the street. What street is this that I just saw? And I start thinking, I said, well, let me call places and backtrack just to see if somebody found it or something. I called the UPS store. It's my first call. I called the UPS store. And this guy came up. He answered the phone uh, from, he's uh, Arabian. He answered the phone. And uh, he said, 
Yes, I said, uh, man, I was in your store and I think I may have dropped my wallet in the store. Cause I'm not, you know, the whole street thing, I, I just hope it. I said, I, I, I dropped it, I think I dropped it in the store. He said, oh, he said, I have your wallet. I said, good. He said, it's a miracle. I said, I know. So I said, I jumped in the car. Well, I went, worked out. After I worked out, I drove up there, but y'all don't hear the best part. I got in there and he said, oh, here's the miracle guy. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you didn't drop this in the store. He said, this was out on the street. And somebody picked it up, drove by, saw it, picked it up and brought it in here. He said, look at it. It had wheel tracks on it. They were running over it, Elder. And in my mind, I said, that's just how I saw it when God asked me. I wanted to say, bro, I know you Muslim. You might be Muslim, but you better give him up. I started to bring it to show it to you. It was all tore up. I mean, cars had just been running over it. Somebody picked it up and took it in that store. You know why they picked it up and took it in the store? Because it was my wallet. It wasn't just anybody's wallet. It was a child of the king that's in the 4D realm that every now and then gives us a gift and steps into the 3D and does a miracle for his children. <laughs> you should have been getting with that because you're going to need the same thing. You're going to need the 4D to come into the 3D and do something for you that nobody will be able to explain because in the 3D it looks like phenomena it looks like paranormal activity but it's God moving man that's a true story. I can't even believe it. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is good. All the time. And all the time. Let that encourage you. Some of y'all going to need that same intervention. You're going to need that same intervention with that religious exemption. Yeah. This old vax mess. God, I need you to intervene. I need a 4D. First Corinthians 13 and 11. When I was a child, I did what? I spake as a child. I understood. That's the key one. I understood as a child. Any of y'all got children? Sometimes they understand as a child. Amen. Sometimes they need a little beating to make them understand a little better. They need a punishment. You can't talk on the phone ever again. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but you, sometimes it needs a little intervention because they are understanding as a child. Do you understand why? No! Well, let me help you. Now, do you understand? Yes! Sometimes you gotta beat the brakes! Just so they can get an understanding. Understand me? But I understood as a child, and then I thought as a child, woo! But when I became a man, what did I do? I put away childish 
thing. Then I'll be nudging your husband. and see, put that PlayStation up. That's not a childish thing. That costs too much to be a childish thing. Anything that costs $300 plus is not a childish thing. Now, children may play with it. <laughs> Ain't nothing about that childish. <laughs> but I put away the childish things when I became a man. This is so important. The mark of maturity goes well beyond your knowledge of scripture or exegesis and interpretations of Bible passages. Way beyond. In the time of Christ, no one knew the word better than the ones that opposed and killed him. So maturity can't mean that you're an expert in the scriptures. That don't mean you're mature. Because these are the folks that killed Jesus. Those that were the most well versed. Amen. Like the people I know that are the, some of the wisest biblically. Their demeanor, they carry themselves. You wouldn't know it. You have to ask them questions. Before they even say anything. When they have wisdom and knowledge and maturity. Now, the ones I know that just have knowledge, you can't say nothing to them. How you doing, brother? Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm pray, Lord. I'm, 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 I'm. My brother, you know, I kind of saw some things happening, and I thought I ought to bring them to you. Oh, I, mean, I, I mean, you know what? I, I know. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I, I don't have time for that. But yeah. So no one knew the word better than the ones that, uh, than the ones that killed Jesus. John 7 and 1 says, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk among these Jewish leaders in Jewry. Because the Jews, what? They sought to kill him. So they weren't very mature. They had knowledge and they knew how to be Jews. But they didn't know how to receive the Messiah. They didn't know how to receive truth. Just because a person is well versed in Bible knowledge doesn't make them mature in the faith. Can I say that again? Just because a person is well versed in Bible knowledge does not make them mature in the faith. Jesus told those that were filled with knowledge that they had to come to God as a child. Which meant they approached him with the teachable and learnable spirit. Yeah. Amen. You whip a child, you probably don't have to whip him for that same thing again. You have to whip him for something else if you're a whipper. But you're not, <laughs> not going to be the same thing most of the time. They'll learn because they're learnable. They go to school, they, you homeschool, whatever you're doing, you're teaching them because they're learning. They can learn. Because they're a child. Most of them haven't grown to ignore knowledge yet. Amen? So, Jesus told those that were filled with knowledge that they had to come to God as a child. Luke 18 and 17. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. You're going to miss it if you don't come as a child. A person that cannot learn or is too prideful to hear will never mature. The clapper. He going to get y'all going now. A person that cannot learn is too, and, and, or is too prideful to hear will never mature. That's spiritual retardation. They'll sit in church for years and never learn. The worst thing that could happen to them is the internet because in the end on the internet they aren't even challenged to learn they just gather all the ones that have the same problem they have can I keep preaching in here yeah. so in order to mature in the faith you have to couple knowledge with what 
not enough people said it. So let me say it again. In order to mature in the faith, you have to couple knowledge with what? Under, do you understand the words that are coming out of a mouth? I'm sitting here talking to you, brother. This right here. This is why it's wrong. This is why you can't do it. This way. I mean, I, I heard what you're saying, but you know, for me, you know, I mean, I, I just, me and you, we just a little different. No, no. It's not about difference. See, let's, let's go back to the understand. Right here. This is why that what you're trying to do can't be done. I know. I mean, but that's for you. But for me, you know, I have a different way of doing it. But the And they do that in church. Let's see you do that on your job. Look here, manager. Uh, I think we ought to do it this way. Oh, I'm glad you think that. I think you ought to do it the way I said, so you can get my check. Okay. Yeah. You right. You right. You're not gonna sit there and go back. Well, now. But, but, but I, I know this company's big. I know there's a CEO. I know. I, I, I understand all that. But this right here needs to be changed. <laughs> Says who? They don't do that nowhere else but church. Break the church rule. This, this is just the way, you know, this is, you need to go down the street in South Dallas and find that church that does it that way. And it's okay. Everybody can't be here. We don't, we don't have room for everybody. So we don't need nobody in here just to be in here. Amen. In order to mature in the faith, you have to couple knowledge with what? Understanding. Understanding comes when the fruit of the Spirit of God is what? You don't have understanding without the Holy Ghost. That's the problem. Folks have knowledge. That was the problem with the Pharisees. They had knowledge, but they didn't have the Holy Ghost. They had knowledge, but they didn't believe in the power. That's how they are now. These brothers will rattle scripture off and hold you to the letter of the law. But have no power. No power. But understanding comes when the fruit of the spirit of God is what? Activated in you. Colossians 1 and 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that ye might be what? Filled with the knowledge of what? His will in how much? All, All wisdom and what? Spiritual. Spiritual. It's not enough to just know the word, brother. You better know the application. And you better know where you're going wrong so you can apply it to that. That's understanding. Ooh, these Pharisees. The scribes, Pharisees, and Sadducees had knowledge, but they used it to attack, humiliate, and maliciously destroy people in the name of the Lord. These are the religious leaders in Jesus' time. They use their knowledge to attack. How are you attacking folks with the truth? Humiliate and maliciously destroy people. In the name of the Lord. They felt it was their religious duty to attack those that they felt sinned or transgressed the law. It is not your duty to judge folks like that. No, no, that ain't your duty. God ain't called you to attack people. <laughs> no, no, you just, and I get it, you, you, you don't have any understanding. So you got to be careful with all these old video prophets. I mean, we supposed to have a blackout. We were supposed to get attacked by bees. We supposed to have a, I mean, all kind of stuff was supposed to go down. That ain't happened yet. Three days of darkness. Remember that? When the darkness was going to beat us all up. Brother, the darkness is going to be so thick, you're going to feel it. It's going it's to fight you. 
Y'all remember that? And I mean, he went viral. Remember the preacher from last year? I just see September. I tell well, in September there's gonna be a few food shortage. All the rest, all the, uh, uh, the the grocery stores, the shelves. I see the shelves empty. All that everybody start. You went and bought all that tuna. Yeah, that's no no maturity, man. That's no spiritual maturity, dude. You better be careful. But they felt it was their religious duty to attack those that they felt sin or transgressed the law. This is the way of the devil and not maturity at all. Thank you. That's the way of the devil. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. So whenever you got an accusation ministry, I know who you work for. Uh, just a Pharisee got the biblical knowledge no Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost will take your finger and what will he do every time be like Lord he a giant turkey Lord he a kashata he's a giant turkey Lord oh Lord he's a giant turkey oh Lord who's the giant turkey now huh did I say that? <laughs> well, he gonna let you know. But this is the way of the devil. John 8 and 4. But now ye seek to kill me, Jesus said. A man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. The baby said, we're Abraham's sons. But brother, no. He said, y'all the son of Satan. But had all the knowledge. No one had more knowledge. No one had more experience. They had all the knowledge and the experience. But they didn't have understanding. Got that Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. Y'all still with me? Yes. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. I only know part of it. But then shall I know even as also I am known. Folks argue the word like they know more than Paul. And Paul said, I only know a part. No, 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 see, the word meant this. See, see, brother, you're wrong, brother, you're wrong. See, I got a whole list of stuff you haven't said, and it's wrong. The word, this, this, this. Bruh, I, yes, I might have made some mistakes because I only see in part. Amen. Yeah, everyone in here going to be faced with that. Sit your kid down and say, sorry about that, Landon, I was wrong. And if you can't do that, you ain't going to have no relationship with your child. We shouldn't have, I shouldn't have done that. We should, I, man, sorry about that. Let him know I come straight up to it. I want him to know his father. I, want him to, I don't want him to love the me that folks see on the videos. Because that's not fair to him. But we see through a glass darkly. But then we're going to see face to face. But now only a part. But then shall I know even as also I am known. We don't know everything. Look at somebody and say, you don't know everything. Look at somebody and say, you don't almost know everything. Look at somebody and say, you ain't close to knowing everything. You might not know anything. <laughs> All right, don't get locked out the house. Remember what you said in church? Mm, I don't know nothing. I know how to get in this house. <laughs> but we don't know everything, and we should never posture ourselves as great scholars or teachers. And this is where, you know, I get abused in this area because... You know, I've been preaching for a long time. I study real hard. So I do know some things. But when I get around folks that know, 
and think they know or want to know or want me to think they know, I let them have it. I be sitting there, yes sir, oh yeah, yes sir. Because I'd rather have the relationship. Yeah, I'd rather have a relationship. Bro, I put up with some of your inconsistencies and all that, but if that's what you feel like, but I want the relationship. That's valuable to me. Because I'm going to need you one day. So if that's what it takes, man, I give you that. That's, that ain't even no big deal because don't none of us, all of us bootleg. We all bootleg. Ain't we all bootleg? We all bootleg. But you thought you knew 10 years ago. You, 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 you know more now. You better understand now. You bootleg. We all bootleg. So we should always carry ourselves as humble repeaters of God's truth. Don't carry yourself as a scholar and a teacher. Carry yourself as a repeater. That's all you are is a repeater. We don't know anything new. Don't you? Oh, see, I got a word God ain't told nobody. <laughs> You're a lie. You're a repeater, man. You don't have no breakthrough revelation. Because that's what all these videos are online. Everybody trying to be first to the punch. They want to have the breakthrough revelation. Yo. Oh, the mark of the beast is here. It's here, it's here. Well, where's the Antichrist? Well, I, he is a computer. Well, no, that ain't what the Bible said it's going to be. <laughs> Jesus came in the flesh as a human being. So if the devil always copies Christ and creates Antichrist, then somebody is going to think they Christ. But everybody, oh, yo, don't, don't, don't do it. Just all of this stuff, man. You're a humble repeater. You need to position yourself and posture yourself as not knowing anything. Yeah. Paul said, I don't know anything save the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And Paul was smarter than everyone in here. Everything we teach and preach has already been said before. That's humbling. You think you got that word and don't want to tell nobody. Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> nah, I die. <laughs> Come to church Sunday. I die. Nah, I die. I saved it. This one. This the one going to get the folk going. This going to get them going. Bro, that ain't original. You know how long God been here? <laughs> He's the beginning and the end. He's heard your message before. That's what the beginning and the end means. Yeah, so quit. You are a repeater. That's what I am. G. Craig Lewis, let it be known. I'm not a scholar or a great teacher. I'm an awesome repeater. After I finish saying it, I'm going to read what Paul said. That's a repeater. Paul said what the Holy Ghost said. He's a repeater. Ain't but one originator, and that's the creator. So you can't take his glory. You can't take his credit. Get somewhere and sit your raggedy tail down. You ain't doing nothing. Posture yourself. As, oh, see, they come to me because I answer the deep things. Well, no, the Bible said that God does that. Shut up. So no man can posture himself higher than another. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory. Thinking you something. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. So as good as you think you are, you got to esteem someone better. That'll shut you up. And why you want to be so good anyway? Right now, we are seeing things formulate into biblical end-time events. But a lot of it is just not easy to understand. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. What you be sitting there? Well, see, I understand it all. See, here's what's going to happen. And you, say, you don't know. It's just not easy to understand. So we must posture ourselves humbly when dealing with end-time things like the mark of the beast, God's wrath and the grand separation of goats and sheep. 
chill. Look at somebody say, chill out. You got to be careful, man. Once you say it's the mark of the beast, anyone that has it, there's no hope for them. They're doomed to hell. Why don't you let Antichrist tell you it's the mark of the beast? That's what I'm waiting on. He going to tell you. He going to tell you exactly what it is. But when dealing with these things, man, you got to posture yourself humbly. We must be careful not to shut up the kingdom of heaven like the learned men did in the New Testament. That was their problem. They were so strict and didn't give anybody any grace that they shut up the kingdom. Nobody could get in. Matthew 23 and 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So he said, you ain't going. You stop the people from going, and you're not going either. Because in order to get mercy, you have to what? Give mercy. In order to get grace, you have to what? Give grace. In order to be forgiven, you have to what? Forgive. We may know how things will end, but we do not know the hearts of men. We can never judge a person's heart and assume that they are doomed. But pastor, they took the mark of the beast. How do you know it's the mark of the beast? How do you know that? Because the Bible said they wouldn't be able to buy or sell unless they received it in the wrist or in the forehead. So where is the shot going? In the wrist or in the forehead? <laughs> well, see the, but that, see, the Bible, what it meant. See, bro, you twisting and turning now. You trying to make a point. But why can't it be? Well, I mean, there's no world leader that has linked it to the worship of Satan and the defiance of God. So you got to denounce God. So that hasn't happened yet. It may happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Oh, the back. You sure want this to be the mark? Why you want it to be the mark to be so bad? Because my daddy took it and I don't like him. That's what it is. That's what it is. Why would anybody be trying to push for it to be the... Man, I'm pushing the other way. Please don't let it be. Because I got loved ones that took it. I don't want them doomed. I, don't, I want them to have a chance, God. Please, please. Please, Lord, don't let it be. No, that's where I am. You just, oh, no, it is. Yes, it is. On the internet, in a room by yourself. We got real live people in here. We ain't listening to nobody that can't gather people. You opened your church, you had two members, you included. <laughs> Bruh, no, 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 no. You can't know everybody following you. Oh, but in that room, oh, God is speaking. What? What? God just said, <laughs> it's the mark. Anybody took it, you're doomed to hell. <laughs> man I'm praying and hoping God don't let this be and I believe that this is a prelude I believe that they are testing us I believe they wanted to see who's a Christian that's what I, I believe they're trying to see who's saved because that's the only opposition the devil got what, what, what else the devil got to do I, I mean why else would the devil be doing this his only concern is where God is what would any other concern be he got his sin, he got his billionaires, he's got his elite, he's God of this world. So there can only be one concern for Satan. Us. Us. Can I keep going? We can never judge a person's heart and assume that they are doomed. That's why I stopped. We can never say that God is not able to use them or save them. You can't say that. Amen. 
Well, brother, you said God ain't using Kanye. I sure did. Kanye's using God. That's different. I've been doing this for a long time. I know when they're using God. They'll come out with a video cussing everybody out like he just did. Can I keep preaching? Hey. The religious leaders. No, no, no. Though we know those that are his by their fruits, there is always hope for those that have not yet chosen him. Amen. He said in the end time, the prostitutes and the bill collectors. <laughs> they said tax collectors. Somebody like the bill collectors, they can't be saved. <laughs> Some of y'all in here are bill collectors. You better take that job. What's the job? Bill collection, but you don't have to have the vaccine. Ah, uh, I will be calling folks. Uh, we saw you the other day. Hiding out at the mall. <laughs> you better take that job. But though we know those that are his by his fruit, there is always hope for those that have not yet chosen him. There's hope for folks that chose him and fell away from him. You don't take that hope away either. You keep praying. God, let them come to their senses because I was a fumbling, bumbling idiot when I first got saved. So God, help them to see the light. Save them, Lord. I want to see folks saved, not lost. The religious leaders in Jesus' day decided who was righteous and who was not. Jesus knew they were only judging others because of the issues of their own hearts. And he said, God, forgive them for what they're doing. Because he knew their issues were causing them to do that. John 8 and 7. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you do what? cast the first stone at her that's when they they went and got the woman in the act of adultery caught her in the act of adultery and Jesus said the coldest thing he said in the whole bible this was this was just oh my goodness let him without the without sin cast the first stone and they all got to look at like uh oh because that was a good one Human, a human can't think like that. First Corinthians 13 and 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is what? Charity, which is love. Faith is necessary to believe that God is who he says. And he will do all that he promised. In this hour, we must have faith because what we see is dark and dismal. We must believe in the unseen in order to have peace in this hour. Amen. That's a mature person. A mature person, that's why you got to know some mature folks. So when they call you on the job and say, hey, you know, uh, brother, you, 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 your, your deadline is whatever. To, and, and we're going to have to fire you or whatever, whatever. You know, a babe in Christ is going to react. Ooh, it's dark and dismal. But someone that is mature in the faith is going to tell them, brother, I haven't been through this before. Matter of fact, this job I have right now, I didn't think I was going to get. But the power of God intervened and showed favor in the eyes of these other men. And they chose me for this job. So just like I got favor then, I'm going to get favor after this. It doesn't matter what they do. No matter what restrictions they put up, they are not in control. I serve the true and the living God. God is in control. So I got to get around somebody that is mature and sees things through faith. They see the unseen. They trust in the unseen. That's the only way you can have peace. Hebrew 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of what? Hope is an anchor which keeps us stable. It grounds us and keeps us from drifting. The Bible calls it an anchor of the soul. It keeps you from drifting when you have hope. The devil is causing argumentative religious people to rob us of our hope. 
they condemn, they prematurely judge, and they cancel as the world does. When did the church start canceling? Canceling folks. The church is the opposite of cancel. It's supposed to be hope in the church. They want you to cut yourself loose from hope. So you will be adrift and unstable just like them. But Hebrews 6 and 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. So hope is our anchor. It holds us and keeps us. So I'm not moving. They come to you and tell you something and the devil wants you to move and shift and change and reinvent. Now my hope's going to anchor me, bro. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to stay right here because I got hope that this situation is going to work out. And if the situation don't work out, I don't know where to go. So I might as well stay here and let hope anchor me. Oh, I wish somebody would listen to me this morning. Love is greater of the three attributes because God is love. This is why God will not allow those that name his name to carry hatred, malice, ill intent, or bitterness in their heart. That's why you keep getting poked every Sunday. You in here, and when you leave service, ooh, pastor, he just, see, he just such an angry little man. Folks close to me don't they, they don't think I'm angry. You think I'm angry, babe? They think I'm just fun. Yeah. Ask Jonathan. Am I angry, Jonathan? You think I'm angry? <laughs> angry little man. <laughs> People that's around me, am I, am, do I walk, am I angry? Do I keep y'all laughing and having a good time? Ain't that what we do? So, oh, but he's preaching it. Well, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's the cantankerous spirit you have, and when I'm preaching truth, it's disagreeing with your feelings. Because you're carrying hatred, malice, ill intent, or bitterness in your heart. And at ABC, God's going to show that up. Yeah, God don't want it in the kingdom, and he don't want it in this fellowship. So he's going to show it up. So that's why you feel like that. Oh, I just feel like... I have people tell me, just when you look at me, I just see anger. Just, that's my leader church and told and said that. I just saw him and he just, I just saw hate in his eyes. Like, really? No, you didn't see. Ooh, I know what you saw. You saw ill intent that you're carrying. And you saw bitterness that you're carrying. Yeah. If you tear yourself down and hate your own appearance and hate the way you look, then when you see me looking at you, you think I'm looking at you because I don't like the way you look. But you built that up in your own mind. Now you done came, you done just started a whole coup at the church. Because you think you ugly. And because you think you ugly, you think when I looked at you, I was saying with my mouth that you ugly. I was saying, how you doing? I was saying, how you doing? And your eye, your, your whole personality changed what I said. Yep, yeah, ugly. That's what you heard. I was like, I didn't say that. Well, you said it with your eyes. <laughs> if you quit saying it with your face, then <laughs> you won't. No, I'm just playing. But you're saying it to yourself. You're looking in the mirror. You're tearing yourself down. And then when you hear me talk, you think I have that tone. Or you get an argument and somebody else is tearing you down in your house. Your husband and y'all calling each other, you old ugly thing, you old bald headed sucker. You sound like Fred Sanford's house. And then you get around normal people, because we're normal, like we don't communicate like that. You get around normal people, how you doing? Oh, I don't like the way you said that. I, what? But you argue an hour on the way up here in the car. You carrying stuff. You carrying hatred, malice, ill intent. 
and bitterness. And blame it on me. You was bitter before you met me. But listen to this. When you carry unforgiveness and all of this bitterness and malice, God allows the devil to torment you until you remove it and forgive. <laughs> You're tormented. You're tormented. Can you imagine how miserable it is to walk around and think everyone is talking about you? Think everyone has a problem with you? Think something is wrong with you and everyone sees it? That's torment. Because of unforgiveness in your own heart towards someone else. You went in on somebody. You went off on somebody. You wished them dead and talked about them like a dog. And God is saying, until you get that right, I'm going to let the devil do what he does. And you're tormented. Can't sleep at night. High blood pressure. Sick. Word getting preached every Sunday against it. But you won't come up here to the altar. You won't come lift your hand. You won't come get it right because of that root of bitterness that's in you. So it's getting you tormented. Pastor, I just need you to pray, man. It's just demons everywhere. Won't you forgive? You're being tormented. Man, you ain't gonna keep me up all night talking to demon after demon after demon and they all have permission I'm preaching you cannot be in him and not love your brothers and pray for your enemies the love he showed you by forgiving your sins and erasing your past must be reciprocated to others in order for your own forgiveness to be instated some of these folks aren't even saved because of unforgiveness. Mark 11 and 26. But if, I, if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Summary! Being mature in the faith is not about how much time you have spent in church. Amen. We have seen people that have belonged on the roll of a church for 30 years prefer to stay at home and watch service on Zoom. So it can't mean the more time you've been in church, the more mature you are. Being mature in the faith doesn't mean that you are better versed in scripture than everyone else because it was the Pharisees and religious leaders that Jesus called the sons of Satan. And they knew everything. Satan himself challenged Jesus. Oh, gosh. Satan himself challenged Jesus with scriptural knowledge in efforts to tempt him. <laughs> so we know that having biblical knowledge doesn't mean you are mature in the faith. If the devil uses it, is he mature in the faith? <laughs> He's the opposite of the faith. Being mature in the faith means that you are prudent. Y'all know that's the word for 2021. Prudence. Can you make decisions based on, fut on the future? Can you consider the future in making your decisions? Can you, uh, can you consider how your decisions are going to affect the future? What you're doing, how does that affect your child? How does that affect your family? That's prudence. Being mature in the faith means that you are prudent. It means that you understand when to speak and when to hold your peace. It's maturity in the faith. It means that you understand who to fight and when you are fighting on the wrong side. Maturity means that you understand how to love and forgive even when it hurts. You know how to avoid senseless disputes and arguments over biblical things. It means that you understand how to righteously judge situations with compassion and love and not harshly because of your own issues. Right. Being mature in the faith means you know you are subject to sin and whenever you are leading anyone in prayer or deliverance, you name yourself as well. That's maturity. You humbly pray 
for others with yourself in mind. We are all humans and need the mercy of God even when we are leading, pastoring, preaching, or praying for those under our care. This is true maturity. An immature man is not prudent but reckless. He doesn't consider his own future or the future of others. He doesn't apply God's spiritual fruit and definitely doesn't consider his own deficits. He is emotional and draws emotional, vengeful followers. In this final hour, we must pray against immaturity and childish behaviors so that we can have a good understanding of where we are in God's timeline and how we begin and how we can navigate to the end. Maturing in God begins when you can repent, forgive, and be taught. Can you be taught? When a man has been pastoring 10, 20 years longer than I have comes, I'm quiet. They ask me for stuff, Elder. Well, I see you got this, brother. I'm all ears. I want to learn. Amen. When the elders approach you, hear. When I approach you, you better be teachable. Are you teachable? <laughs> no, brother, you're not. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I hear you, but I, oh, brother, you, you, you're in the wrong place. We need teachable people. Because that's the only way you grow. I don't want this church to just fill up with people. I want teachable people in here. I'd rather have a small teachable crowd than be paying a note on a big old room with a bunch of folks that's not listening and got their own way of doing things. Brother, don't let we know. Maturing in God begins when you can repent, forgive, and be taught. Admit your mistakes and pray for those that fight against you. Yeah. Only then are we able to help others without harming them. The mature person can help others without harming them. James 3 and 13. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a what? Good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. You know what meekness of wisdom is? That means you may be smart, but you're going to hold back because somebody is, they may know more. So I'm going to have a meek approach to the wisdom I have in respect of the wisdom they may have. Got a phone call the other day from a preacher, and he had another preacher who I consider one of the greatest preachers ever. He was on the phone with him. They're on the three-way, and they're just talking. And, man, I didn't say anything. Why would I talk with all of that rich wisdom on the other line? Yeah. So I'm just listening, isn't it? And they're trying to get me to say something. With brothers, I was like, I don't have anything to say. I just want to hear yeah. smartness. Wisdom, understand. Can y'all help me? Man, came up some of the areas. My dad was a pastor, grew up all that, but then some of the areas I came up the rough side because I chose that side. So I got scarred. I got, you know, picked up issues, all kinds of stuff. So, man, if somebody is standing before me with answers, bruh. I need answers. <laughs> but if you got bitter envy and strife in your heart, you can't do nothing I just said. Glory not and lie not against the truth. Don't let your way of wanting to do it make you lie against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. <laughs> For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. 
But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. Pure. Then it's what? It makes peace. Anybody got the wisdom from above walks in peace. No matter what you say to them, no matter how you do them, they're not going to say anything. They're walking in peace. You know, we're all going to have to be like that. They're going to be coming to you, badgering you, talking about you. It ain't even happened yet. Spitting on you, Christian. Oh, you got a problem with me because I'm LGBT, I'm gay, I'm trans, whatever. You got a problem. They're going to start doing that. What you going to do, put up your dukes, punch them? A homosexual will whip you. <laughs> My daddy taught me that. He said, don't you fight no sissy. He said, they've been fighting all their life. I took heed. <laughs> yeah, but they're going to do that, but you're not going to fight them. You have to stand there and take it. Peaceable. The wisdom that is from above is pure, then peaceable. Then what? Gentle. Gentle. Brother, let me holler at you, man. Come here, man. I'm not going to do this in front of nobody, dude. I want to talk to you one on gentle and easy to be entreated. Full. Look at somebody say full. Full Full of what? Mercy. Mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that what? Make peace. Everyone stand to your feet. Somebody told me the other day, man, I went back and listened to one of your sermons from 2007 or something like that. Boy, you was yelling and angry and you was this and that. I was like, yeah, I was young. And it was good. For the time, it was necessary. But as I get older, I wouldn't pass it then. As I get older and I got people before me all the time, I have to entreat people a little differently. Amen? I can't yell at everybody, catch a plane, and go home. I'm stuck with (laughs) y'all. So, I got to handle things a little differently. But that's maturity. The evangelist can't be the evangelist as a pastor. He got to decide which one he going to do. Because there's a different temperament that is required. Yeah. Yeah. When I was on the road, I just cast the demon out. I'm done. But here, I got to work with you to get you there. Give you some principles. Give you the word. Give you the truth so you can walk it out. Can't leave town. I got to see you next Sunday. (laughs) But that's maturity. So in this end time, y'all, we have to mature. We have to mature. Just mature. Understand that we have to grow. Get a better understanding of what people are going through, what people are dealing with. Where that's coming from. Man, that behavior right there, I know where that's coming from. Let me help you with that. On my own behavior, I see where it's coming from. Let me take care of that. That's maturity. So we can't walk around and be children. We got to put away childish things. Amen? Amen. Everyone bow your heads. If that's you and you wanting more spiritual maturity, just come up. We're going to pray for you. I just need to grow in some areas. I don't want to be this way. I've been this way year after year. And it's time for some maturity. It's time for more faith. It's time for stronger faith. It's time for, I don't, I don't want every time I watch something on TV or watch something on the internet or somebody sends me a clip, I lose all hope, I lose all faith, and I'm right back where I started. Every time the job sends me an email, uh-oh, this is the week. This is the week we find everybody. And they've been doing that since August. But every time they send it to me, I, my heart starts beating it. Oh, every time I see an inbox, every time I see a phone call and the call ID and I see my mama's number come up, my heart gets to racing and beating fast. My daddy, my cousins, my friends, whoever it is, I'm ready to grow 
I'm ready to mature. And Pastor, I just want to mature in this church. I want to get to the point to where I appreciate this word and I don't want to lose focus. I don't want to be in here trying to find focus. You know, some folks can't focus. The devil put a spell on them. So they come in here, they can't pay attention if they want to. God, I want that off of me because I know I need this. This is the end time. I just, I just can't give the devil room. I need to plug in. Anyone else? We're going to trust and believe, God. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message on maturity. Thank you, Father God, for this message of putting away childish things. and God, having mature faith and mature hope and mature love and handling people the right way dealing with people's deficits and issues the right way. Father God, having the right temperament, having the right posture. Father God, just being right, period. So right now, God, we just come before you after a message like this, opening up our hearts for you to do whatever you need to do within us, God. Father God, show us the areas we need to grow in. Show us the areas that you're trying to redirect us in. Father God, when correction came, we turned it away. But show us, Father God, the areas that need to be corrected. Show us, Father God, illuminate the path that we're on. Show us where it leads. As David prayed, Father God, for you to look into the future and see what would happen to him and his men if he made a certain decision. We pray right now, God, that you do the same for us. If we make this decision, will this happen? Should we do this? What's going to happen? You are Alpha and Omega. You know the beginning and the end. So God, we pray for that level of maturity. Not to just make decisions on a whim. Father God, not to just do things because others are doing them. Not to do things because it just feels right. But God, it has to be right. So help us to know when it's right. Help us to know when to say it. Help us to know when to hold our peace. Help us to know when to move forward. Help us to know when to go right. Help us to know when to go left. Help us to know, Father, when we are challenging the authorities that you've placed in our lives to lead us and guide us. Help us to know when we're on the wrong path. Help us to know when it's a selfish choice, when it's a narcissistic decision, when it's an emotional decision. God, lead us and guide us. Mature us in the faith so that learning the word and applying the word and understanding the word can all go together and we can navigate through these end times in the name that is above every name help us Lord help us Lord come on lift your hands up and God I speak I pray the prayer of faith right now that faith Father God would come supernatural faith supernatural faith God so that we'll believe no matter what we see We'll believe in the unseen. God will believe and we'll stand on what you said. And we won't let go. And we won't let the world change our minds. We won't let TV change our mind. We won't let the internet change our mind. Father God, help us. Give us faith. Faith for these end times. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, hug somebody and say, I got faith. I got faith for these times. I'm going to believe. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to keep believing no matter what. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Faith. Faith. Hallelujah.